Welcome to this month's Carbon 60 Tech Talk, hosted by myself, Don McCauley, Senior Account Executive for Western Canada. And Christian Johansson, Solutions Architect based out of Vancouver. This month, we're going to be talking about a technology called Kubernetes, which is primarily known as a container orchestration tool. But what are containers and why would you orchestrate them? Christian, can you explain that for us? Absolutely. Thanks, Don. As you might be familiar with, this is a typical what we call LAMP stack. So it's a web server uh, that is connected to an application server. And all of those run on a uh, thing called hypervisor. So these are common virtual machines. And as you can see, they run in your data center most of the times. And all of these can connect to an SQL database. So that's pretty typical. But why would anyone change this stack when it works so well already? That's a great question. But this, like, is a common scenario, as I said, as long as you don't have to deal with like cases where it's a Black Friday. Imagine you're a business owner and like the load increases, especially within a pandemic, like everybody orders online. So you might have to increase um, the web service. So you add other web service, which is a virtual machine. So it takes a moment, I would say up to 30 minutes to just like handle the load that ex actually exists right now. Even if you would add a load balancer, that's another machine, another virtual machine. And if we think about the app layer, maybe this was not built in terms of the, the service that can handle this. So you might have to add a message queue or a cache or something. So this becomes a, a challenge. And the other thing I see is these are virtual machines with different operating systems, different standards. So if you want to update and patch and make them secure, that's kind of an ongoing process. And this is because it's something called configuration drift happens all the time. So yeah, that's kind of like the, the two main things is like, how do you scale those? How do you add components? And the third one is like, how do you handle the day two operations? So Christian, can you show us that same stack in Kubernetes and answer the questions you posed for us? Absolutely. And as you can see, we're talking literally about the same stack. So you see that this is a LAMP stack as well. There's a few minor differences. So we have still the web app and DB layers but they are part of the OS. So a Docker container describes an application that's kind of like in an immutable container. So these things are just spun up the way they are and they don't change over time. If you want to make a change, you just deploy another container. And that actually solves the first problem, the configuration management issue, because there's nothing to configure. It's immutable. So if you just want to add another web server because the load increases, you just add this container. And it's the same for the app server. So if you want to add another app server saying this should be another layer in terms of caching the app, you can just easily spin this up. And while a VM has a size around like 10 gigabyte minimum, we're talking 150 megabytes here. So the spin up time of something like that would be around like 10 seconds maximum. And the good thing is this does not go down. And because Kubernetes takes care of all of the orchestration around that, it's easy to even add a load balancer, which is immutable as well in front, and saying, okay, now that I might have like three different web servers to cover the load in this peak time, because I know that this is kind of like the main business event, I can just like add a load balancer in front. And these containers are called microservices. So these services are handled as the web service, as the app service, and even as the DB service in this case. And now we put a load balancer service in front as well. Kubernetes allows you to orchestrate all of them. It makes them more secure because the application does not change. There's no impact on the operating system. It helps you solving the scale issue. And even adding components like load balancers and um, caches like Redis, it's an easy task. Christian, that was really impressive, thank you. So how would an organization achieve this with Carbon60? Well, actually, that's a good question as well. And I mean, you see this existing stack, this is where we can help you manage this and what we might do for you today. But we also help you to re-architect this into something on Kubernetes. And if you are willing to move to AWS and Azure, we help you manage this too. And this might be a mix between discovering what we have right now and putting this in the right architecture for the future because we actually introduced a few services. And did I mention the best? With a container environment, you're able to just move anywhere because they are independent from the hypervisor. Christian, thank you very much again. And thank you for watching. 
If you'd like any more information on this or any other our cloud offerings, please contact us at the following information.